Hey guys, this is Anna from Simo Apps, and in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to make a UI table view in Swift UI, which is called a list. I'm going to step you through how we can set one up, how we can connect up some real data to it, and finally, how you can take an action when you click on the list item. And you're going to love this. If you've ever done table views in Swift before, Swift UI makes it absolutely simple. I promise you all the complications you've done before can be done in five lines of code now. Isn't that amazing? Let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to create a new single view application. Make sure you've got use Swift UI selected and we're going to name it Swift List View. Hit next. Then in your folder, select create. All right, so we've got our editor here. So what we're going to do, let's get our live preview going. So hit resume on the top right of the preview window until you see it load up and you'll see the text, hello world. Perfect, we've got our preview going now. So we're going to name the first item of text, BMW. Under that, we're going to create a new block of text and we're going to name it 335i. And what we need to do in order to render that, we need to place that into a stack. So we'll place this into a vertical stack as follows. So create one, put your curly braces around it. Let's move that into the vertical stack and then give our screen a second to catch up. We can see we've got BMW 335i. However, if we change 335i, we'll notice the text is center aligned. So what we want to do in our V stack, do brackets, alignments, dot, leading and after alignment don't forget the semicolon and then you'll see here on our preview it's all nicely aligned to the left now so let's get rid of that and now what we'll do using the UI editor we're going to add an image so go add get the image and we're going to drag it left of our V stack and in the newly generated code for your image add system name colon photo and now what you'll notice we've got a nice little placeholder for our image here this is a new feature introduced into the later Swift where you can use a bunch of symbols for your image so we'll just use that for our placeholder for now now to the fun part with our H stack select that use a command key click on it and you'll see a bunch of actions. Simply hit embed in list and let's watch the magic happen. Give our UI a second to update, boom. See how fast it was to create a table view in Swift UI? If you've done this before in Swift, you'll recall you need a table view delicate, the table view row and so on. It's a bit of a pain to set up and get going. Whereas in Swift UI, We've simply got it going in five lines of code. How amazing is that? So, so simple. This is a complete game changer for Swift development. It's going to considerably speed up all of our workflows. So cool. All right, so for our text, what we wanna do, let's inspect it. Let's make the font of a subheadline. Let's make the color gray. We'll close that down. Okay, so now we can see we've got BMW 335i repeated over and over. Let's actually connect up some test data that shows different items on each row. So go to File, New File, New Swift UI File, let's name it Cars, hit Create. We've got our Cars file here now. So we're going to delete all the body from it. And instead of a type view, we're going to name it identifiable. And this will create a structure for our car. So we'll create there ID equals UUID. And this will give each car a unique ID. Create variable make as string. Ver model as string. Ver image name. And for the image name, we're going to make it as a string and we're going to set a getter. So it's going to simply return whatever the value is make 
for image name, which you'll see this come into action later. Now to actually set some test data, we can use the if debug directive here. So simply get rid of this stuff here, get rid of the whole structure and do let test data equals create a new array. And now you can put in all your favorite cars here. So if we do car, make, we'll do colon BMW 335i. And we don't need to set the ID and make sure we put in model for 335i. We don't need to set ID because it creates a new UUID for it and image name already has return and make and make that let test data equals cars. So now that you've got that in, I'm going to copy some cars I've already created. So I have a Ferrari 458 Italia and Mitsubishi Evolution X. And now to actually get this cars into our table view or list view, in our content view, before the body, create a new variable called var cars. And it's going to be an array of cars. And we're going to set it to be blank at the start. And what we do down the bottom in our if debug in our content preview, we're going to pass the test data from our other class. And you can see we don't need to import anything. We have direct access to it. And to access it in our list, get rid of the zero to five, we'll name it cars. And then for item in our BMW text, we'll do item dot make item dot model. And let's watch the magic happen on the right hand side. So to make sure the view updates, always remember to hit that resume button because if you're jumping around, it may pause it because it can run a bit slow at times especially considering I'm on a still on a MacBook Air. All right, perfect. We've got our BMW 335i, our Ferrari 458, and our Mitsubishi Evo 10. So let's add the images into our dynamic list. So I've went ahead earlier and I've already prepared some car logos. So I've got some here. So you can download that in the description below. So grab those images, drag them into our assets folder. And you'll notice they're all named exactly the same as our car make. So we've got BMW, Ferrari, and Mitsubishi. So what we need to do, we simply jump back into our content view. And for the image name, we simply use car or item dot. And let's jump back to our cars. And it was item dot image name, which is what we want. So we used item dot image name and let's resume that and check out our images. All right. Holy moly. Our logo is absolutely huge. That's just insane. So let's resize the images. This is quite simple. We use dot resizable. Then after that we use dot frame and we can set it to the width and height we want. So we'll do 32.0 and height we'll do 32. Point zero. Perfect. You can see our images are a lot more nicer and they fit onto our list view nicely. All right. So what we want to do next is add a nice title to our navigation. So in order to do that, wrap everything in a navigation view. So we'll create a new navigation view, grab our list cars, chuck it in there. And at the very end, do dot navigation bar title passed in a text of my garage. Okay. So what you want to do is in the final curly braces of list, the dot navigation bar title needs to be there with the text of my garage. It might be a bit fiddly to get working. It is a bit of a strange place for them to make you place it. Anyhow, we can see we've got my garage up on the top here now. And this is pretty much like a UI navigation view in Swift. It's nice and easy. And as you scroll up, it will make the text a lot more smaller so you can see the rest of the content nice and easily. Finally, let's actually make it so when you tap on each list item, it will print out the car ID to the console. So in order to do that, what we're going to do 
we're going to use something called a group. So I'm going to go to add, search for a group. And what this is, is this is essentially a container for a bunch of views you want to apply a single thing to. So in this case, we want to make it so if you click on anything in that list item, it's actually going to print out the car ID to the console. So let's drag group onto here. And let's copy our image and VStack or we'll cut. Let's move it into our view. And now we've got a nice little group here where we can actually run a tap action on. So at the end of the curly braces on group, if you do dot tap action, you can print hi, I am on to the console and we'll print out the item.id and we'll also print out the car model. So print out the item.model and this tap action can be applied to anything at the all. If you add dot tap action, you can make anything tappable. So it's super easy to do. So in order to actually test out that tap action, we need to run that in the simulator. So we're going to run it on an iPhone 8. So let's hit run now and check that out in action. All right, so we've got the app loaded on our simulator, but you might notice something is a bit off. Our cars are missing from our garage. Do we have a thief? Did someone steal them? What's going on? I mean, they work on the preview on the right hand side fine. So why won't they happen in the simulator? Well, that's because of this if debug directive down here. What this is doing is only for the content previews, which is a thing on the right hand side. Do we actually set the cars here to use our test data? So a quick workaround is if we get out of our simulator, our variable cars, we'll just set it directly in our code to be test data to actually show you that it does work in our simulator. So now we're accessing the test data directly in our code. Let's rerun that and see what happens on our actual device simulator. Perfect. We've got our cars here now. We've got our BMW, Ferrari and Mitsubishi. If we tap on our BMW, on the text or the image, you'll notice in the console we get, hi, I am on. The ID of the BMW, it's a 335i. Same with Ferrari and same with the Mitsubishi Evo. So have hopefully found that helpful. If you've used table views before, you'll definitely agree it's much, much easier in Swift UI. And you can download the source code for this in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it helped you out.